I'm Anne Park, married to Alex. We have three children, a nurse, a school key worker teacher and a university student. I've got two amazing parents, my dad, 94, in an old people's home and mum at home, both 200 miles away. I give God thanks daily for their protection. Now, the idea for this devotion started when a neighbour placed a message on our street WhatsApp group. He simply said if anyone was fearful or lonely to phone for a chat. I wasn't fearful or lonely, but I thought what a simple, lovely idea, but thought nothing more about it. Then in our first Sunday YouTube service, I felt God impress on me. I should personally approach and speak to a hundred different, mainly non-church people over this new season, to talk to and encourage them with verses and words, and obviously to share that our messages were online as well as simply to listen. The word from God was confirmed when two people quoted Psalm 100 in prayer meetings. I also noticed that my son had Psalm 100 as his phone home screen background, as his church at university had used this for a worship evening focus. So here is Psalm 100, a wonderful psalm of praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Now that last verse I can testify as our children are indeed fourth generation Christians. It also ties in with the song the blessing, which was released early on in the lockdown process. I encourage you to listen to that song if you haven't already. Just Google the blessing. Now, at this time, I was also reading about the lives of John and Charles Wesley. Charles was the writer of over 6,000 hymns and John was the founder of the Methodist Church. I was astonished to read how God used these learned and devoted men to build a church that grew from zero to over 70 million followers today. John rose daily at 4am to pray and read the word. He travelled over 250,000 miles on horseback all over Britain to preach the word of God sometimes in very hostile conditions with a lot of opposition. A bit like today. On one occasion, he went to a very poor area of Newcastle to simply go to the end of the street and he began to sing Psalm 100 to hundreds of people who slowly gathered. He then returned at five o'clock and found there were thousands gathered there to hear him preach the gospel. I find this amazing because there were no gimmicks, no razzmatazz, just the anointed word of God. Again, if you consider the outdoor crusade meetings of Billy Graham, he simply spoke the word of God and people responded. It says in Hebrews 4 verse 12 that the word of God is active and sharper than a two-edged sword. We need to be in prayer that the hundreds who are hearing the word of God preached online each Sunday respond in a personal way as they did in previous moves of the Spirit. A further encouragement with regard to focusing on 100 came during my reading of this fabulous book, Dirty Glory. 
it recounts the establishment of the 24-7 prayer movement. Page 229 tells the story of the brother and sister Robert and Grace who had grown up as missionary children in India and were used to praying ambitious prayers. When they were at university, they prayed nightly for their generation to receive a heart for mission. At a conference led by D.L. Moody, Rachel had prayed for a hundred students to sign up for the mission field. This was achieved and became known as the Princeton Pledge. From this small beginning, they began touring the USA and over 40 years later engaged over 20,000 missionaries to serve overseas. And then finally, we have Shirley Solly asking us to consider making a list of 100 things to thank God for. I nearly jumped out of bed when she started her devotional. Maybe the Lord is speaking to us individually or even as a body to consider how to glorify his name at this time. He is an amazingly creative God. Just look around at the spring flowers. And I believe he wants us to think creatively out of the box at this time in how to reach others as well as to bring glory to him. Prayerfully consider, is it to read and praise God guided by Psalm 100 or to write a list of a hundred things to be grateful for, as Shirley suggested? Is it to serve the Lord a hundred days, weeks or a hundred months overseas or to make a list of a hundred people to pray for, especially the sick amongst us? Is it for our fellowships in Crystal Palace and Penge to grow in hundreds as people respond to the living word as they hear it online? Or is it to pray for your 99-year-old relative to reach a hundred? Or is it to weep with those who weep for the hundred plus key workers who've lost their lives at this perplexing time? The Lord has allowed this virus to interrupt our lives, but it will not be with us forever. But his love and purposes will prevail. Let us not miss what he is doing now and will continue to do in the future. If you'd like to, let us pray. Dear Lord, I want to thank you that we are your people. Show us how we can be creative with our thinking to glorify your name at this present time. I want to thank you that you are good and your love endures forever. Thank you for your faithfulness. It continues throughout all generation. And Lord, we ask for a mighty move of your spirit in this new era. Amen. Thank you.